This shows some of the places we can mount a magnet on the bottom of the engine. These magnets uh, activate a reed switch, which either activates a, uh, to, to operate a block, activates a railroadconcepts.com switching interface module. This is what controls this block here from uh, red to green and controls the stopping and starting or the reed switches drive these automotive, they activate these automotive relays, which in turn control the American Flyer turnouts, which is what operates the uh, siding. And the, and the turnouts have routing control. When you put this button in the correct position, it'll cut power to one or the other sides of the siding, which is what stops the trains on the siding. But going back to the magnets, on this 283, it was possible to mount it on the uh, drawbar. The magnets will actually stick to the metal drawbar on this uh, Atlantic. This was modified. It has actually has a plastic drawbar because somebody modified it when they put the soundtracks, decoder, and speaker in it. Uh, but the magnet seems to work here on the front uh, on the front truck. Going back to this uh, S helper diesel, we glued the magnet onto the. Uh, front coupler. You can see the magnet up here on the uh, front coupler, up under the front coupler. On this K4, I tried putting the magnet on the drawbar and it seemed to mess up the operation of the engine. It wouldn't go to switches properly, apparently because this, this is, I think somebody modified this drawbar and it's up close to the body and it hinders the operation of the drawbar, but this magnet, I stuck it on the bottom of the tender and it seems to work okay there. Now here's probably the best way to do it in the future. I found that with American Flyer cars, they have metal trucks, and you can just stick a magnet on the bottom of the truck. There's a magnet just stuck on the truck. That way you could, uh, you know, move the car from one engine to the other as required. You don't have to mess with the engines. You just put them on the bottom of the cars. The only place this doesn't work if you're running a, you know, a scale coupler which won't couple to an American Flyer car, then you've got a problem. But as long as you're using the larger couplers, this system would probably work. As I as I mentioned, this system needs to be uh, here modified to put these reed switches further back. The problem is if I try to use this magnet on the car for this system, the engine pulls the engine pulls the uh, magnet up to the reed switch, and the engine's up here in the block. So when the uh, magnet trips the reed switch and the power is cut off to that block, it tends to stop right there. And if you don't have momentum, the magnet will end up magnet will end up sticking sitting over top of the reed switch, which is bad because it'll keep putting continuous power to the turnout and possibly burn it out. Not to mention jamming the system. So with the reed switch further back here, the magnet on this car would activate the reed switch, and the engine would still be getting power enough to pull it up beyond the reed switch. Now you can turn one of these sidings off so one train will just sit dead on the siding. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go over here and depower the switching system. Just to emphasize the point, I've covered that one train up. I depowered, I, I disconnected the, uh, I turned off the switch going to the American, that powers the American Flyer switches, so they're essentially dead. The relays aren't activating them anymore, so those switches won't throw. Uh, just to emphasize the point, I put a towel over top of the parked train. Uh, with the system partially depowered like this, that train will just sit there forever until we power the switches back up. You can use this just to give a train a rest or if you want to change trains on one of the tracks, you can uh, power down a siding. Now we'll power that siding back up.
I just turned that switching system back on. So next time the, uh, uh, you can see the switches, you may be able to see the switches just went to straight. The switches are back in operation. So next time the uh, block goes to green, the diesel will pull out of the siding. Note the location of that uh, reed switch that sets the system to green, which is back where the uh, green cardboard is in the rear of the layout. Repositioning, repositioning that makes a radical difference in how the system operates. Uh, if you move that thing uh, counterclockwise around the loop back closer to the block, it'll pull trains out of there sooner. On a longer layout, you can actually put two or three trains on the main line at the same time. With large scale, we actually would hold two trains in the yard and have two out on the main line. So when you move that uh, that green, that track contact reed switch that makes the system go green uh, to a different position, it alters the way the system operates. Okay, now the block is turned off and I removed one of the trains from the siding. We just have two trains on this system. This system is now operating in the same mode as it did in the previous video number, video number 659. Uh, just a two train automatic passing siding situation. You can see the one train, the diesel will come in, throw the switches and stop and the steam engine uh, will pull out. Now that diesel will wait there until the steam engine goes around the loop and pulls in the, di the diesel will pull out. Just a simple alternating siding system, which we call an automatic passing siding. Notice the block, as I mentioned, is, is depowered. It's not going to red to green. I, I set it to the green state and then turned it off. Now we can further depower this thing completely and it just becomes a Now we can further depower this thing completely and it just becomes essentially a piece of straight track if I turn the, the switching uh, turn the siding control off. I once again turned off the power to switch the switches and just to emphasize a point, I covered that park train with a towel. Uh, so now the, the siding is basically just a piece of inert straight track. So the diesel will just keep going through like it was a normal track. So you can operate this thing basically in a, a single train mode of operation like we're seeing right now, or as an automatic passing siding for two trains like we were doing a minute ago or is an automatic switching block controlling three trains like we originally started out with.